Today, I'm gonna to show you all of the plugins in After Effects that I use to supercharge my UX workflow. So let's dive in now. We're starting off with AEUX, which is the most important plugin for any UX motion workflow. This allows you to take all your designs from Figma and bring them into After Effects without any weird exporting and importing and all that nonsense. And I actually have a video that dives into the whole process of how to use AEUX, but I'll give a quick overview here. Essentially, you have a few options here. Uh, you can import things into the current composition that you have open, or you can actually create a new comp every time you import. So we're gonna select new comp, go into Figma, open up the plugin and select our frame and send selection to After Effects. That's gonna create a brand new composition here where I have all of the shapes that is identical to what I have here in Figma. It's a super quick way to import all of your designs and be able to animate them right here. The next tool is Motion V4 by Mount MoGraph. And this plugin is full of a ton of different tools which personally I only use a select few of them uh, every single day, but it's full of amazing stuff in here. So definitely worth checking out and exploring. I wanna show you just a few key ones that I use every single time that I animate. Uh, so one here is say that we wanna do an animation where this thing kind of moves over here and everything else kind of cascades and follows with like a slight delay. There's a tool for that in Motion V4. So let's go ahead and lay down some keyframes here. It's just gonna move from here to here. Um, and we see that we have that one moving. We can actually add some easing here through this tool with a different type of interface than using the normal graph editor there. And so we got that going. What we wanna do is actually we wanna say this position we wanna actually apply to all of these other layers as well. So I can select that property, select all the other layers and hit delay. Uh, we can show the keyframes. We can, we're not gonna pre-compose, we're not gonna shy it, we're not gonna do a guide layer, we're just gonna run delay. And so now if we play it, you can see now we have everything animating right after each other. Um, and it's all controlled with some expressions, but that's applied automatically. And it gives you some nice layer controls right up here. So we can actually increase the delay of the position. So if we want it to happen 207% after the first one happens, then we can do that. Um, if we want it to be like a very, very, very slight delay, we can do that as well. This is super helpful when you're mocking up different ideas, say that you have a screen loading animation and a list kind of animates in. We don't want it to animate in on one big block. We want it to kind of cascade in so that it unfolds like a story um, and feels a little bit more dynamic and lively and kind of gives the affordance that you can kind of swipe down and view more things in that list. And so this is a really easy way for you to do that. And it allows you to be more flexible. So if we actually wanted to change this animation, we can change it and all of the uh, animation is pushed through to all the other layers. So that is super, super helpful. Another tool that I use all the time is this section here. This is actually to reposition your anchor point. Sometimes when you draw a shape, the anchor point is not in the center or not in a logical place. It's just kind of like right here. And so when we need to do something like rotate, it's not rotating where we need it to rotate. So with this tool right here, you can just select where you want that anchor point to go. So that's fantastic. The next one is the clone tool inside of this plugin. So say that we have an animation like this and we want to basically uh, repeat it over here. If I just go ahead and uh, command C and command V, I just have duplicated the layer, which is not helpful. I just wanna only duplicate these keyframes. I can do it if I go to each property and select each one of them and duplicate it uh, in each layer. But sometimes you have a ton of layers and you just wanna get it done quick. What you can do with this, you select all the keyframes that you want to clone and you can say, I wanna clone them standard and it will just repeat that, that animation again. Or you can say what I use often, because if you animate something in, you also want to animate it out. And so using the mirror mode on this one is really helpful. And so it just mirrors your keyframes that you already have laid down and it allows you to quickly clone those and mirror them. And the next one is flow. And this is used specifically just to apply easings to your keyframes. What's amazing about this is that you just have this super simple interface of how the easing curve should look. And you just select your keyframes. You can select as many as you want, as little as you want, and you just hit apply. And it will apply that easing to all of your keyframes. What's amazing about this, especially as you're working in a motion design system or in a broader team, you can actually save your specific easings to a little library. And so you can ensure that your entire team has all the same easings and that you're consistent across the board. And Motion V4 has its own easing interface in integrated in that tool, but I much more prefer this interface over the other one. All right, this next one is Rift. And Rift is a free plugin, very old plugin. It's been around for a long time. And it allows you to do more of a manual manipulation of doing delays of your layers. And it gives you a lot of different controls here. But essentially, you can say, I want to select a specific part of my layer or all of it, the specific keys, and I want to arrange them sequentially uh, in descending order 
one frame apart. And you can see if I click that a few times, it's continuing to space each layer an additional frame apart from the previous layer. And if I change this to 10, I can hit that a few times. And now if we look at our animation, we have this nice staggered delay for all of our layers. And this is a really helpful tool if you want to do all of these delays and things without using any sort of expressions, because Motion V4 does all of this really nicely and things are parented, but it all uses expressions. And that doesn't play friendly if you're doing something like exporting to a Lottie file, uh, which we will get into next. This next plugin is an absolute essential thing to have uh, called body moving. And that allows us to take our animations here and export them as a Lottie file. Um, inside of here, there are a ton of different settings. And I actually have a video about exporting Lottie files from After Effects that you can check out. But really, this is necessary if you're going to be creating any sort of animation that's going to be implemented as a Lottie file. GIF Gun is an essential plugin that allows you to export GIFs directly from After Effects into a nice, compressed, high quality GIF to share around. This is something that I use multiple times every single day in order to share animation progress with different partners and teammates. And uh, it just makes the process super simple. You can select as many compositions as you want, click make GIF, and it just exports everything with all the settings that you need it to be. GIF Gun also has the export settings for WebM and MP4, uh, which is also amazing to just have a one click export option uh, for all of your animations. And the last one I'll mention is marker remap. There's a video that I just created that covers everything that this thing does. Uh, but this really helps supercharge some of your compositions and makes them a lot more dynamic and flexible and makes it really, really easy to use. So in this composition, I have certain parts of the animation sectioned off with markers. And if we go back here, we can see that we can just play it forward. But with this plugin, I can say enable retiming. And you can see at first nothing happens. But in here, I can actually select some of these markers. So I can say mic on and the mic will animate on wherever this marker is. So if I move this actual marker around, it will actually trigger that animation wherever that is. And it will stay on the last frame until another marker is set. So I can say it's going to be mic on, it's going to start processing here, I can make this processing take even longer, and it will stretch the animation to fit that time. And this plugin alone has really made my process significantly more efficient of being able to make one composition that has all the animations in this one specific element, and I'm able to reuse it in different places again and again and again. And those are the plugins that I use every single day that make my process much simpler and much faster. Hope this is helpful for y'all. Catch y'all next time.